Uh, Gustav Metzger just turned 90, so it means that uh, he is one of uh, very few artists that we can consider today almost like a living legends. He has been born in uh, 1926, and um, in a certain way, um, he, through his life, through his artistic activity, uh, really crosses all uh, important and all even dramatic moments of recent history. And that's also what is reflected in his work. So it means uh, it's an artist which uh, really summarizes uh, immensely dense period. And uh, approaching his art means almost like touching time. It means going through a moment of the uh, Second World War, the tragedy of Holocaust, because uh, he himself has been touched by uh, this tragedy and uh, most of his family perished in the Holocaust. It means uh, understanding what does it mean for a young man to be without home, without family, because uh, he and his brother has been rescued and brought to England and uh, basically shared the same destiny of Jewish refugees and among which also there were quite a number of important artists of the period and also colleagues of Gustav Metzger, like Leon Kozlov, like uh, Oyerbach and so on. Uh, his mentor, David Bomberg, also is one of these representatives of Jewish community. So these are, let's say, uh, premises on which he has been uh, formed as a person. And uh, for sure, it's something that uh, will uh, reflect in his later activity and uh, his later obsession with certain ideas. It was really incredible to hear that uh, this early period in which he started to be aware what does it mean to uh, be active and work as an activist, how much it really influenced all his later work. And he said this sentence that really touched me deeply because he said, in all my life, I was trying to do something which will change the course of the history. And uh, my activity, my work, all of that really was aiming to make a change. In this period, when in a certain way, um, he was for the first time experiencing the collective effort and collective energy within this very early movement of anti-nuclear engagement. He said it was one of these moments in which uh, he really felt that he made a change in the course of history. And I think uh, that uh, his phrase really made me understand that this act of parish meant this, meant uh, we all have to make some kind of an effort to try to affect the change. And he was really very still convinced that art has this power to make a change. And I think his work, in a way, uh, makes us aware of uh, history and uh, tries to push us to make a change. When you see this exhibition and when you study the book that's been produced for this occasion, uh, you will see how two sides of Gustav Metzger's work uh, start up as different aspects of his personality. He is a painter. He actually starts up make, uh, trying to be a sculptor, but he, he is uh, devoted to painting. At the same time, as he worked strongly engaged in various movements for environmental protection of city environments, and also against the nuclear warfare, the threat that seemed so imminent and still is, of uh, atomic warfare in the 1940s and 50s. And those sides are sort of moving alongside in his art, but at a point in the late 50s, it seems like these sides are m starting to merge, and they merge more and more and more clearly over time. So you can see in his latest works how his political engagement is always present in what he's doing. At the same time, it also has to be understood that Gustav Metzger is not only an activist. His art can never be uh, reduced to his actions. It is art, it is sculptures, it is sort of interpretations of the conceptual art, of painting and so forth. So nothing can, never, can ever be reduced to just being statements. They are also like truly artworks, 
with all the ambigu ambiguities that follow being artworks. We try to look to the work of Gustav for the first time maybe in a deeper perspective than uh, it was presented till now. I think uh, together with Gustav it was uh, possible to uh, come to know better and uh, address better a period of his uh, early activity, which haven't been that much uh, researched, haven't been uh, that much uh, presented, and all of a sudden the possibility to come to, to know early period and uh, documents and paintings and to go hand in hand with Gustav through this early period of his life made the possibility also to rethink and uh, maybe even uh, re-articulate or uh, redefine all his activity because all of a sudden you could understand uh, on the one hand uh, where his uh, auto-extractive and acid paintings come from and you could understand uh, what is the genesis of certain ideas and what is the, the shift that he made, it in, made in his work when he started to develop uh, his uh, first uh, manifestos and his first ideas about uh, auto-destructive and auto-creative art. So I think uh, this retrospective is this kind of uh, deeper span, which um, thanks again to this inedited material, we, we had the possibility to present.